Well, how are we getting on? Welcome, my friends, to the Mark Tall and Motivated YouTube channel. Mom, do you like that for an introduction? That's pure Dublin style, the Gucci gang. I'm looking forward to this chat now because it's one of the ones I was really looking forward to talking about. It's, it's about, basically, it's my first ever Ironman. And uh, <laughs> the experience I got from that was just legit. It was lit. It was it was brilliant. Still to this day, like I mean, like wow. Where will I start? Well, I'll tell you where I'll start. October fourth, twenty fifteen. Put that in your diary. Even though it was five years ago. Don't worry. Um, but now I'm gonna rewind <laughs> right back to July of twenty fifteen. Because I suppose um, if someone was to ask me how to come about, you know, my first ever Ironman. Um, I signed up for in Barcelona, October 4th, 2015. It was for 3.9k swim, um, 180k cycle, and then a full marathon, 42k. So it was a long, drooling test of endurance. One I've never done before at that stage. One I'd never done, I suppose. Um, and I remember just, I was in work in Aer Lingus, where I'm still at this moment of time. We are flying low at the moment. Yup, the altitude. Um, I remember sitting in an office, we were at this discussion on a table, and we were looking to do a charity event. I remember one of me, um, one of the lads said to me, he goes, oh, get out Mark over there, he'll, 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 he'll run Ireland for you, make a lot of money for us. Ah, bit of moolah. And I was like, oh yeah, sound. And, um, and then, they knew I did uh, exercise, and loved running and all, and cycling and all that stuff, and they knew I was mad into it, endurance. So, I remember I was doing, it was looking to do, raise money for charity. It was for uh, a nursing home. I think it was, for, uh, what I forget the name, I knew it was five years ago, but I remember the objective and one of them said, turned around and said, Mark, you're going to do it. And I was there, well, what's going on? I'm in work, I'm not even awake here. We just wait like a home start train. That's when I wake up, boom. And they said, would you do an Ironman? And I was like, ah, yeah, sound. Didn't really know much about an Ironman at that stage. Never really. Oh, I've heard of it. I've, I had heard of it, but didn't know what it entailed or what it was about. To be honest, I didn't know there was a swim in it. <laughs> Until I walked out the door and they're like, now, Mark, you didn't know there was a swim in this. And I was like, sorry, what? I can't even swim, I said. They were like, oh, you're at the sign up to it. And I was like, yeah, I know, but look. I was like, this is going to be some battle. So this was the end of June, early July. I can't remember exactly. So... I remember thinking to myself, going, okay, I've, I've committed to an Ironman, a full Ironman. I haven't really trained at all for it, because I was only found out about like two hours ago, as I was told. And I went in and sat down that night and I came home and I to myself, going, Jesus, what am I going to do? I can run and I can cycle, but I can't swim. So I literally had nine weeks to learn how to swim, between eight and nine weeks, literally from scratch. I remember my best mate, Stephen Caffrey, we went down to Alset in the pool. And he brought me down, literally, in armbands. Couldn't even do half length of the pill. I was like, oh, what's this chap like? The Titanic, here we go. Zoom, gone. Bring in the Calvary. Um, you up the RNLI. And <laughs> it was, it was, that just, that, 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 that clicked. That one, that first swimming session I was in there, I remember going to myself, going, right, Mark, you need to cop the fuck on here. You need to cop on big time. You're going to do an Ironman. You're going to represent a charity and you're going to walk up and you have a clue to swim start learning get the head down turn up every night and swim 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 and that's what i did literally there's no other fakeness about it or like what tactics do they use or how do they go about it i literally just got in got a few lessons off carefree one other lad i remember that chap was he was like oh yeah put your head down like that <laughs> bit more of a glide there you go mate i was like yeah jeez i must do that the next time don't forget to breathe absolutely Little, just learning tricks along the way and I just kept going up and down like a blue ass fly zoom 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 they were like what is this chap doing and I'm like lads I'm on a mission and um, I remember just getting better and better and just getting more lens in each you know every week I was getting more lens in and more lens in and more lens in I was like right this is grand I'm starting to kick on with this now I was getting more confident then I went down to the see me wetsuit like two weeks before the event during my first sea swim ever it, thrown in Wayne Carly brought me out to Balbriggan over a bridge, gone. I was like, ah, oh. Navy Seals, the whole lot around me. I was like, yeah, this is brilliant. But it, it, it gave me a confidence boost because I was in the sea, I was starting to swim, and I was like, I loved it. So it was great. <sighs> yeah, the running, I always do running. So that was kind of in the bag. Not, not in the bag, but like I had the, the foundations of running long distance. 
was I an expert? No. Am I now an expert? No. But I had the foundations of running long amounts of periods of time. So that was good. Cycling, just a matter of getting the bike and cycling, just get on with it. Was I winging the whole thing? Probably, yes, I was. Um, like, it was, it was, it was crazy because the build up was like the build up. I remember now we're in September now, and the build up was really starting. I was like, right, okay, now it's four weeks away. I remember September the fourth. I was going, right, we're a month away from the event now, and. I remember people just constantly saying to me, Mark, you shouldn't be doing this. Like, what are you doing? Like, you're getting into yourself into a big situation here. Like, you're going into a full Ironman. You've never, you haven't even done a half Ironman. You've never even done a triathlon before. And in my head, I was kind of going, and I was like, yeah, and, and what's your problem? I'm not being smart or disrespectful. I was like, like, what is the issue here? Like, I, I have two arms. I have two legs. Still do, thank God. Body's healthy, as, as far as I know. Do you know what I mean? So what, what stopped me? Do you know what I mean? I'm doing this for a charity. What do you want me to do? Say no and like, just leave them in neglect. I'm not doing that. Um, and like all September, just kept training and walking, walking, walking. I was probably overtraining because I didn't know what I was doing. My first ever event, I was just like, yeah, right, out, bike, gone, run, right, let's go. Boom, into the pill, let's go. Like, just, like a blue arse fly, as I said. Just going 90, left, right, and center, bang, like the matrix of sport. <laughs> just constantly at it. Thinking that big day, October 4th, it was just in my head the whole time. That was my big trigger date, October 4th, October 4th. Boom, boom, boom. That's your motivation, just keep going. And that's what I did. So, all of a sudden, fast forward to race week. And, obviously, now the tension's starting to build. You know, it's a week before the, the race. The week, the race was on a... October 5th, I think. Yeah, October 4th, sorry. I think it was a Saturday, Sunday morning. Yeah. So race week would have been, yeah, so Monday morning, I remember, it was kind of like, you know, the last week in uh, September. And I remember my swim coach back then, still is, sorry, at times, and um, Peter Conway, and he said to me, he goes, Mark, I'm advising you here now, do not go and do that uh, race. Now, this is six days before the event, my last swim in the pool, and he's like, I'm telling you here now, you have an option here, don't do the race because it's a very dangerous thing you're about to do. Number two, sign up as a relay, get something to do the swim for you, and you do the bike and the run. Now, I stood there, right? And no disrespect, but in my head, I'm going, sorry, what? What do, what do you mean, turn up and not do the swim, but do the bike and do the si uh, do the run? That's not who I am. Either I'm all in, literally all guns blazing, do A, B, C, D, E, F, right away to Z, or I'm not turning up and doing any of it. That's how I am. I don't care. Like, you know, who's going to stop me from doing what I want to do? Like, Dangerous or not dangerous. Like, everything's dangerous. Do you know what I mean? I walk out that door, boom, 79 in the back of the head, they're gone. What difference does it make jump, jumping into the open ocean? That's the way I looked at it. So, a lot of people didn't believe me, believe in me that uh, that week. And even the build up to it, like, I remember loads of people were saying to me, Bar my best mate and another fellow called D-Pack. He up the D-Pack, he was a lifeguard in the pool. He's like, no, no, man, you're good. You keep going. You, you're going to do this. And I was like, yeah, I know I am. And he, made half, he was like, yeah, you're doing it. Other, everyone else just literally had no belief in me. They were like, what is this chap doing? I was like, and that just, if I hadn't, that just spurred me on. I was like, oh, you don't know what's coming at you, baby. I'm not coming back to Dublin without that medal wrapped around my neck like Ali G. Bang. That's the way I looked at it. Like, I remember Wayne Carley, another fellow who'd done five Ironmans, and he was giving me a few tips on the build-up to it. A few weeks now, preparation, telling me how to do, you know, cycle and swim and on the bike and stuff, and he was brilliant, he was. And he told me before he left, he goes, now, Mark, I'll be honest with you. When you get into that water, it's going to be like getting into a boxing ring. And I come looking, I'm going, what's this chap on about? I was like, where are you all getting these bleeding things from? So I was like going, ah, yes, now, man, you have the Muhammad Ali, gone. And, uh, <laughs> boy, God, was he right. But we'll get to that now, shortly. Um, so October 2nd, I remember, it was a Friday morning. We flew out to Barcelona. Got there Friday morning. About 10,000 suitcases. God knows what I brought me. Washing machines, tumble dryers, bikes, you know. Skis, everything, even though it's doing an Iron Man, I don't know what I was doing, but I brought it with me anyway. The press was in the plane. You up the IKEA, sponsored and all by them, I was with all them presses and stuff. But uh, the Friday was grand, I was just kind of getting used to the surroundings and all, and blah blah blah. And then all of a sudden, boom, the day before race day. And today I don't like because I've done many Iron since then, but the day before race day of an Iron Man, it's, it's like a circus act, you know. All the experts come out. All the you know the you know the the advertisement. All the glamour. All the you know the the, the best come around. And be like oh this is what I have and look what bike I have and look what I have here and you're kind of going ah oh, just get on with it will you? 
you know what I mean? I turned up on a bleeding post bike. Do you know what I mean? I was like, I didn't give a shit. I was like, great, grand, I have a heart and a soul and two legs. Bring it on. I don't give a fuck what you have. That's, that was my attitude on that, one, on that game. I didn't care what people had. Grand, you're the Lamborghini. No problem. I'm the Nissan Micra. Do you know what I mean? And it was a case of, that was my attitude going in. Like, if there was hail, rain, sleet or snow or fire in front of me on that day off the Ironman, I was doing it. That's the way I was driven and still am to this very day. And it didn't matter. Like, I just looked around and was like, what is all this circus act? Like, what's going on here? I just went in. Where do I sign? <laughs> Grand. There's your bleeding, um, your race bag with all your stuff. Grand, there you go. Gone. Straight back to the apartment. Food. Feed up. How's it going? Do you know what I mean? You'd have to think, like, why are you there? Are you there for the circus act and the, and the photographs? Or are you there to race and develop as a human being? I chose number B. Um, the night before. Yeah. Hmm, the night before. So I remember we all got something to eat. Just got food. Nice bit of pass into me. Gone. So I left about half eight. Left uh, me mate Carfrey and his girlfriend. They went off, done their own thing. And... What I always do the night before a race is I always go off for a walk down by the seaside, earphones on, and just switch into the mindset of how I think. Literally, no distractions, nobody around, just me in the ocean, music, or whatever. Just get away from everyone. Do that before every race. Just a ritual I have, I always do. It's a moment to reflect, to think, right, Mark, you've got this far, you are here now. The race is literally, boom, 12 hours away. Let's switch on. And that's what I do. So I go back to the department, make sure everything's ready in place, bike set up. Clothes ready to go, runners, everything, just the last final checks. Do you know what I mean? You now, most of the stuff is already gone to, you know, transition at that stage because it was already done during the day. But just make sure everything's, you know, the way it's supposed to be. So you get up in the next morning, boom, it's literally all systems go. So, in that said, race day. Now, race day, October the 4th, 2015. <sighs> My man. October the 4th, 2015, 4.30 a.m. Ding, ling, 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 alarm, gone. Straight out of the bed. Literally, I was on, like, he might be on exit. I was literally, the, the alarm didn't have to wake me. Literally, as soon as the day, boom, I was up. Because this is the day. This is it. Everything you've done in the past. God knows how long. This is it. So I remember, getting out to breakfast, 4.30 a.m., scoffing everything, yogurts, bleeding donuts, pastries, toast, cereal, fries, everything. <laughs> into this hatch gone that was my diesel you know for the whole day ahead and went back to the room got me stuff 5 30 a.m boom let's leave this hotel straight down walking down the gang was my mccaffrey making sure i had everything put me in the zone wetsuit was on ready to go and then 6 a.m we're down there on the beach getting psyched up the race was starting at 7 a.m and it was nearly the swim was nearly cancelled because there was a thunderstorm that morning so i was going oh here we go Jesus, at the sign up for this and I believe in cancelling it. So, long and behold, gave it about an hour and it was kind of put back till about 7 30. So, I did go ahead in the end, so I was delighted. And yeah, Mark gets in, and the race was off. And <laughs> that's when I found out what that guy Wayne said, what he meant right there and right now. Um, it was like a boxing ring. Like, I mean, I was battered. The you picture two and a half thousand people every what i think it was every five or i don't know what it was every every minute or minute and a half it was just literally guns and the next two thousand people off you go or whatever it was 250 people letting get let go every every minute and a half it was just wave after wave and i remember i remember i'm only swimming eight or nine weeks at this stage and you have all these experts i'm swimming 20 years yeah we're gonna have you and be bleeding back all around you and um I just looked behind me and I knew once they catch up with me, they're just literally going to play. They pull you back, they brown, they, you know, they whack you. I remember I had to fight with one fella, he was an Italian fella, and I literally grabbed him and was like, what are you doing, you little tick? And he's there, what is the problem? Like, What's the problem? You're not bleeding, riding me, I said, on top of me. I was like, are you swimming or riding me? And Jimmy was like, well, you're in my way. I was like, I'm in your way. <laughs> I'll get the Irish ferries to me in your way now in a minute. And it was just pure adrenaline. I was like, I was wound up. Now, I've learned from that day to this day, don't react. Because the amount of energy I wasted having an argument with some God knows. El Chapo in the sea, literally all that energy born and having a row with him in the middle of the ocean of two and a half thousand people trying to do a far case swim. What sense did it make? Zero. So I learned the hard way. But that was just adrenaline, lack of experience. Because obviously I knew I was putting myself in a, I suppose, a deep situation. And I should have dealt with it better. 
obviously only swim in nine weeks. So I need I had a lot to learn. So the swim in an Ironman, a full Ironman, is two hours, 18 minutes. My cut off, I done it in 214. So it was two hours, 14 minutes in the sea, and it was a long time. I was wrecked. I got out of the sea. You'd swear I was coming out of a nightclub. I was locked. Literally hanging. I was like, well, and they were like, all right, Mark. Yeah, grand. <laughs> Swallowing water. In a jock I was. Your man goes, you, four more minutes, you would have been disqualified. Ah, oh, yeah, sound, but that's great belief for me, isn't it? Spanish omelet will drown you. And then, um, so I remember getting into the tent, and again, the adrenaline was wound up, was ripping me wetsuit off, and it was going mad. I was like, I oh, get this off me. It was falling on the ground. I was drying myself off, talking powder, me bleeding, noise, and all. I was like, oh, what is this chap? Ah. But anyway, got dressed, bike gear on, helmet on, glasses on, boom, boom, boom. Transition done. Took me about 10 minutes in the transition. Again, lack of experience. And on the bike, and off I went. Now, the bike I was using was literally, it was just an ordinary. Joe's hope of a bike, it was nothing, you know. It wasn't your use, it wasn't your Audi TT or whatever they call them these days. Um it was <laughs> it was mad. And I remember just going on the bike, going where I have to do this for 180 kilometers. The most I ever done on the bike at that stage was a hundred, if even. So I was like, right, I'm gonna find out a new experience today, and trust me I did. And I didn't have a watch. That told me, it just told me the time, it didn't tell me what distance I was at. So I remember asking some young one, I was like, Here, love, how long are we firing at this? She's like, What do you say? Oh, where are you from? She's from Spain or something. I goes, How long do we have to go? Like, what distance are we at? Uh, 90 kilometers. Oh, really grand. So another 90k left ahead after that. And I was like, Oh, this is great. So how are you getting on? Ah, great. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Great, a great day over it. I hadn't a clear. I was, remember, I was wearing AstroTorf football boots on my bike. Do you know what I mean? I just enjoyed the experience, it was just brilliant. Just be a part of that, like seeing all these two and a half thousand people going past you. Obviously now I'm like two and a half thousand people will not be going past me because I'll be a part of that pack. But back then it was just a new adventure. It was a journey. I was just like, this is amazing. Guard the cars flying by your man there shit at me. No talking, no talking. One more time you get penalty. I was like, what are you on about, handball? Apparently you get penalties for talking on an iron man and stuff. It's just an experience. <laughs> I was loving it. Scotting me face, just eating food, um, sweets. I remember I had, I had sandwiches, salt tape to me handlebars, sandwiches in me pocket, do you know what I mean, sausage rolls, everything, just give me that now, on the bike for eight and a half hours, whatever it was. So, obviously, um, the bike was tough, but I got through it, as I said, got in just under the cutoff time. Um, then we got to the run, so obviously back in the tent, parked the bike up, take them clothes off, again, I should have wore a tri suit. That's what I do these days because if you wear a tri suit, you wear the one thing literally for the duration of the event. Of course, I come in with you know, you swear I was doing the Oscars, three different suits for three different occasions. And I <laughs> saw so I got in, got changed, dried myself off, more talcum powder, um, not I believe in coughing episode, choking on the stuff, and basically sat down for seconds. I like, right, focus, let's go, right, Mark, you have to, you have to do a marathon now, 42 kilometers. So you've just done a 4K swim. You've just done a 180K, 180 180K kilometers on a bike. At this stage, I am boxed. Now, you have to do a 42K marathon. I was like, oh, I'm loving this. And it was, just the adrenaline. I was like, oh, I can't wait for this. So I came out of the tent, bursting. Like, yeah, what way do I go? I see, but I get that way, that way. Grand, talk to you later. Gone. Of course, the first 10K, I blew off. Thought it was Hussein Bolt. Why? Because the crowd got in on me. The adrenaline, it was like a circus, it was literally, it was like, it was like going through um, Brazil, you know, the Samba festival. It was literally just drums and, like, you know, like bands and people all over, hey, giving it socks. The Spanish omelets out now with their skirts. And I was like, ah, up out of You know what I mean? And all these professionals going by me, zoom, zoom. And I was like, all right, bud, how are you getting on? And even a word back, I was like, yeah, ignorant fuck. Anyway, obviously he was doing his job and trying to get, you know, get his uh, record and beat his timing on. I was just there for the laugh, having, just enjoying it. Obviously now these days I take it much more serious because I really love what I do. But back then was my first event. I was like a kid. I was like, this is bleeding deadly. And but as the marathon progressed and progressed, I remember after sixteen k, I was like, Roy, I am dying. And that's when the race started to fall apart. Not saying the bike was easier, the swim was easy. It wasn't. But the run, I literally said, right, Mark, you need to dig deep here. So like I remember, it was getting dark. I remember I'm out since seven a.m. this morning. 7 a.m. the race started. It's now what time is it about? It's about probably seven o'clock that night or eight o'clock. And I was literally I was just exhausted. I was like, 
I wasn't even running properly. I was more like just stumbling, running, like barely jogging, you know, slogging along. I was like, oh, but I was doing it. I was getting along. I just kept going and kept going. Cause that's one thing I have is just I never ever stop. That's my main belief. Am I talented as I say? Am I the most skillful? No, but I will literally. And my attitude is, I am not leaving this circuit, this event until I complete it. I don't care who comes at me or who's in my way or who tries to stop me or who tries to suggest, oh, Mark, maybe you should stop now. And trust me, I had that a few times because I remember one or two officials came along the moped and I was like, oh, who's this chap? Do you know what I mean? The moped in Dublin is just like, all right, bud. And then I had some chap in the middle of a race come up to me and I was like, what is this chap doing? He's like, maybe you should stop, my friend. And I'm looking at him going, I am not. I am not stopping. Literally, I was telling him, he was like, I'm not stopping. And he was one of the official referees, like, you know, so you can have to listen to them. I was like, mate, I'm telling you here now, that's when I got serious, like, I'm not stopping. I'm not leaving the circuit until I finish this race and get that medal in my hand. Yeah, but like, you're falling in, because I was, I was, remember, I hopped onto a Coca-Cola truck for a mini man getting a bottle of Coke. And he's like, I think you should stop now you're done. I was like, no, I'm not done, mate. I told you for the 15th time, I'm not done. Got the coke into me, gave me a bit of a boost, back on the track, started stumbling again, keep going. I think I had another 12k left of the stage. And then I had to go to the toilet. And I remember going to the toilet, I was falling to bins and all, and I got into the toilet toilet cubicle thing it was. I remember trying to go for a slash and I just sat there and I just, I don't know where, the toilet went all over the place. Anyway, a disaster. Couldn't even see what I was doing. Then I got back up, fell out the bleeding toilet door, back onto the track. And I was just literally stumbling and stumbling and stumbling, getting there. Like, you know, that's how it was. It just wasn't sane. I remember, like, you make Harvey there going, come on, push, push, push. And supporters were there and, like, come on, keep going. And I was like, that, yeah, sound. And it was just a matter of digging deep. And I had to realise myself, going, Mark, why are you doing this? And I realised why I was doing it. I was doing it for charity. And I was doing it as, as a commitment because I said I'd do it to raise money for the much needed fund. What I said at the very start. And I said, I'm not leaving here unless I get this medal, achieve my goal. People have donated money to this charity that we're doing for the company. I'm not leaving here and making, you know, letting myself down or them or the charity themselves. So I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And that's what I did. And eventually, 2K out. I was like, right, 40K done. I've literally, I've done, I've been out here, like, on the clock now. We're, hit, we're, on, we're over 14 hours on the clock. or 14 hours on the track. So I just kept going and going. And then I remember the last kilometer, I got such an urge and I literally sprinted to the finish line. And I remember coming to the finish line, I just literally, it was just like, it was like, again, a circus. It was just this crazy invasion of people shouting a roar and disco lights. Your man, there, the, the microphone, and here's Mark from Ireland. He wore an Iron Man. And I'm like, oh, mate, I don't know what I am at this stage. Crawling across the line. I planned to do a car wheel when I got to the finish line. The only car wheel I was doing was straight into an ambulance. Gone. But anyway, no, I got to the finish line and it was, it was such a great feeling. And from there on, I was like, right, lads, I'm doing these races full on now. Let's, let's get this going. And it was a brilliant race. Got the medal. And I said I wouldn't come home without that medal. And I made sure I didn't. And I got it. Now, the next day, I paid for it because I was in agony. But you know what? It was a beautiful pain. I remember just walking around Barcelona going, yeah, bling, bling, bling. I could hardly walk. Literally, like, legs were shattered. Brain mashed. Mindset gone. Everything drained. Just eating food. I must have had about three fries the, the next morning before my dinner even. That's how like exhausted I was. Like the lack of fuel. Everything was just gone. White. But I loved every second of it. And what I'm trying to say is it just gave me so much more fuel to say, look, I'm only starting. This is a journey that I am only starting on. And I suppose you fast forward to now, this very day, what are we? November the 20th or something, 2020. I've now done six Ironmans. Three full, three half. One ultra Ironman, one 24 hour uh, time trial on a bike. Like, I'm only getting started still. I'm, I'm still as hungry as I am back that day. You know, so there'll be a lot more to come, but I learned a lot on that first event, is what I'm trying to say. I learned a lot about myself and how to, you know, literally, if you're going to do something, do it properly. But I learned a lot that day because I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. Obviously, I had an idea. It was a long, grueling event, but. It was a, it was an eye opener, just to show how much the body and your mind can go when you really, really, really focus and push it. And that's all I'm about now. I just love motivation, pushing people. So I see someone else slacking them, like, get up, you yeah, and move. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's people out there in wheelchairs, literally, would they look? They're sitting at the at a window with, with a strand on them out, looking out, wishing they could do that opportunity you have. 
what I mean? So that's what spurs me on. Like when people say to me, oh, how would you do with these longer bends? What do you mean, how do I do them? I'm just grateful that I can do them. That alone gives me that pure, you know, like, ah, come here. And that's genuine passion coming out of me. That's not me being fake. Oh no, that's great for the camera. It's not at all. That's me being legit. It just gives me so much fire and passion and feel to say, listen, if I was in that position, and thankfully so far, I'm not. Tomorrow morning, I could be get a smack of a car. Boom, there goes my career. Do you know what I mean? So that's why you have to think. Like The fact that you have legs, you have a body, the brain is switched on, the mindset's in a good place, use it. And that's what I did on October 4th, 2015. I was literally going into that mayhem of a circus doing that event with zero experience. Like somebody thought I being, somebody said I was being disrespectful towards the event. But that's their opinion. I could not give a shit what they think. I was doing it for me and that was the end of it. Do you know what I mean? You, 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 you know, as people say, you, ha you focus on your journey and I'll focus on my journey. That's the way I look at it. Do you know what I mean? You stand there, tunnel vision, zoom. You have a crowd around you of two and a half thousand people. All these experts, analysis, you know, oh, I'm the best, I'm the best. You know, I'm just literally like, oh, I don't give a shit what you are because I'm literally tunnel vision and I know what I want and I'll keep going till I get it. That's my attitude. Now, of course, I'll support people, of course I will. Love helping people, but like, you know, you get the uh, smart ass things that God's gave you, like, oh, I'll get you now in a minute, tick. But again, you learn as you get older and you focus on your own game. What he or she does is irrelevant. So it's now, as I said, 2020, next year, 2021. I'm really hoping to bring down my, my Ironman times and become really, really, you know, I have a great coach now, Jerry Redmond. He's been teaching me, you know, she's almost two years now. Obviously, this year has been a mess because coronavirus, I plan on doing an Ironman, but it was cancelled, obviously. We got one half Ironman in, and even that was brilliant this year. Like, my time improved so much more. Now it was half the distance of a full Ironman, but still, I could see the improvement. It was brilliant. So, next year, 2021, hope, I have one booked already. It's the full Ironman in Ireland, in Cork, next August, August 21st, 2021. And that's the one I really hope to, you know, like the time I done my full Ironman in my first Ironman, and even the past three full Ironmans I've done, they've been brutal times. Like I mean, brutal times. I remember one of me, the coaches, Mick Cowan, said to me, he "Goes, Mark, they're grand at times. Like, what are you doing?" And again, that just gave me more fuel. Like he's right. Like, what am I doing? Like they are grand at. Like, what is holding you back? Like, what are you? Like, why are you taking so long to do these events? And I didn't have the answer. I didn't know because I was training myself. I didn't know what to do. I was just like, yeah, biscuits, give us them. Do you know what I mean? Hey, do you want to use this bike? Yeah, does it have, does it have air and a chain? Yeah, give us that. Gone. Whereas now I was in copping on. I'm realizing, looking, you have to get smart. You have to get disciplined. You have to get, you know, you know, understand what you're doing. You know, get a decent pair of runners. Wear a tri suit. Get a good wetsuit. Do you know what I mean? Get a good bike. Aerodynamics, you know, <laughs> tunnel vision. All these little things. You know, get your nutrition on point. Train, 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 train. Have a steady program. And with Jared and I do, it's great. It's brilliant. He literally has me on point every single week. So that's where I am at this stage. So yeah, that's basically it now. So I literally hope you enjoyed that story because it, it was an eventful first Ironman I ever done that time. Five years ago now. I can't believe it's five years, but time flies. And too many more. Talk to you soon. Hope you enjoyed it.